All right then, so I hope that this teaching will be very helpful to those who are struggling. A lot of people have personal struggles in their life, and I hope that this one will be an incredible blessing to you and a great help. We're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 5. There is one thing that I realized that was extremely crucial for people who fall into addiction and sin. So it is very easy for your heart to fall into the dregs of sin. With the dregs of sin falling upon you, you got to understand that you cannot be free yourself. Sin is such a heavy price. Sin is extremely powerful. That no matter how much you try, you got to realize this, that you cannot free it by your own might, by your own strength. Now there is one thing that we all have in our unconsciousness. In our unconsciousness, now you don't know this, but once you break free from this, you're going to see spiritual maturity growing out of you as well. You all have pride inside your heart. That's right. You don't know it. It's unconscious. It's unconscious. What's pride? Okay, let's look at a deeper definition right here. What's pride? You don't look good. That's the idea. You want to make sure you look good. If you don't look good, you want to avoid that, right? That's in the heart of everybody. You know what the first thing that they do in AA meetings and addicts? So don't get me wrong. There's, uh, I don't agree with their philosophy because they think that you can have any God that you want, any inner power in you to conquer your addiction. We don't believe that. We believe the power has to be the Lord Jesus Christ. But they're, but they're not completely dumb either. So there, there is something to their first step concerning about denying. It's a powerful thing. But that's what we all have inside is denial. This is what this pride is. The denial is, is that you live in denial that you cannot conquer this. You are helpless. You are weak to it. Now think about it. If you thought of it that way, that, look, when I go back home and I'm by myself, I know for a matter of fact that when I'm by myself in my home, and I know it's this trend with a lot of addicts, is loneliness. When I'm by myself at home, I know that I will lose and fall into that sin. If you thought like that, then wouldn't you start to think, I shouldn't go to home by myself then? I should go to church with the other brethren Amen. so that I can feed off of their spirit and their growth and their encouragement so I can live to fight another day. See, you... Truly, deep down inside, you don't deny. You don't humble yourself. You're in denial that you're, you're not in a cannot state. You need that idea that you are in a cannot state. You need to be humble. 1 Peter chapter 5. Then God can raise you up. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed, with humility, not looking good. It's humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. God, I want to conquer this. Maybe he's resisting you to conquer because you refuse to fall on your knees. And to admit, I know that once I have access to cable television and to the internet, that I'm going to mess up in something sexual again. Oh, by the way, it's not just something sexual. I will fall into an addiction of social media again. By the way, didn't you know that's becoming an addiction now? They're starting to put that in their list now. Social media is becoming an addict now. Video games, internet, social media, just for playing. Chats, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> in case you, If you've been watching for several hours now, you better shut off. See that? What is this? 
This is becoming an addict. And you got to realize, if I have that screen right in front of me, then I know that I'm going to mess up and fall. I know that. I know that and I believe it. I believe that I'm going to sin and mess up once I have it. And when you do that, what are you going to do? You're probably going to have uh, some people around you to uh, filter the computer or put it in the living room. That way you can balance yourself out and people can keep an eye on you. Maybe you'll, disc even better, disconnect the internet, disconnect the cable. Maybe that'll be even better. Well, you might spiritually say, oh, pastor, but I got to watch you online and stuff like that. Well, you know, you ever thought about that? Maybe, you know, you could probably watch us online, you know, at the library maybe. Or maybe there's honestly no other means where you can watch us online. Put the computer in the middle of the living room. Watch us online through there with all your roommates watching you. Maybe that'll be a good testimony. They might get saved just hearing it. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe put limitations on your gigabytes, on your cell phone, so you can be charged more when you watch too much and only watch us through the cell phone, maybe. Something like that. Come on. The thing is this, is that you got to realize, look, it doesn't matter about all the, there are so many, you know what the problem is? See, that's pride again. You know what pride is? Excuses. Denial. They all share something in common here, folks. It's self Excuses means self-justification, justifying yourself, pride. That's why you skip your Bible reading and prayer over and over again. If you thought that, I know that if I don't pray first thing in the morning, read the Bible first thing in the morning, that will be the last thing of my life. And I know it. If you don't think like that, that's why you keep skipping it. You keep messing up. This is good stuff, amen? This is good stuff. This is the problem right here is that you got pride in you. You got to realize I'm bomb, I'm wicked, I'm a sinner. All of you people say that all the time. I'm just a wicked sinner. I'm helpless. Oh, man, I just keep falling into sin. Pastor, I can't get victory over it. No, you don't believe that. Yeah, come on. You don't believe that. There is pride in you where you're denying it. You're making up excuses for it. If you realize that you are truly wicked and helpless, then here's my question to you. If you are truly helpless, you, and I mean you are nothing, you are nothing, what are you going to do then if you're nothing? If you go back to your own ways, if you go back to uh, your own ways, denial, excuse, pride, looking good, etc., etc., your own ways of conquering, my question to you is this. If you realize that, why do you keep going back to your own ways if you truly are nothing? Yeah. Yeah, now, when you realize that this is truly nothing for you, your own ways, you got nothing, right? What else can you turn to then with nothing? If you're truly humble, if you truly believe in the power of God, if you truly believe he's everything and all of it is right, you're going to finally go by God's ways. You're just stubborn. You're just prideful. That's your problem. What did God tell you over and over again? Oh, I've tried it. I've tried it. No, you haven't. You haven't emptied you. You only went back and forth. You and God. You and God. No, 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 no. What did God tell you to do? Read the Bible. Pray. Are you doing that? Oh, pastor, I'm having a struggle with my addiction. Okay, when's the last time you read your Bible? Amen. Yeah. I can't get victory. When's the last time you prayed? Yeah. Oh, I tried that. It didn't work. Oh, when's the last time you did it? Last week? Mm -hmm. Oh, no wonder it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried it one time and it didn't work. Hey, who says God said, read the Bible and pray one time. Is that what he said in his word? <laughs> what did he say? I'm preaching here uh, because I'm doing this out of sincere love for people who have a stronghold of addiction. Amen. That's why I'm doing this really strictly and seriously here. Did God tell you one time to read the Bible and pray? Or did he say daily? Yeah, amen. Yeah. What did Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have 
good success. Psalms chapter 119. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. What did the book of Psalms say? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What did the Bible say? What did Jesus say when he was tempted? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God in his own temptation. Yeah. What did the Apostle Paul said? Pray without ceasing. What did King David said? I pray at the morning and the afternoon and the evening. What did Daniel do? He prayed three times a day. Yeah. Are you going by God's ways? Here's another thing. You heard me say this over and over again. I don't know why you're not doing this. Come on. Well, I'm too busy with work, and I'm too busy with that. Ah, 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 ah. See? Your own ways. Yeah. You refuse to say that. Look, if you truly realize that you're wicked, you're nothing, you would have thought this way. If I go back to work again, I know I'm going to fall back into th this sin because I depleted my energy with God, my spiritual protection and haven with God. Without this spiritual haven, spiritual shield, I am truly nothing. Do you believe in that? Do you believe in that? See, you don't really believe it. You're denying. You're thinking it's not that necessary for you. You can skip one day. See, because you're going, you, you a little more, more than God. That's why you lose the battle. It's pride, unconscious pride. Denying where you are truly helpless if you skip Bible reading. Denying you are truly going to fall into that sin if you skip prayer and skip going to church. That's why you fall. That's why you fall. You need to go to church. Here's another thing. You need the brethren. Yeah, amen. You need the brethren to support you, bury one another's burden. There is strength in numbers. You've got to understand that. Now, thank God for some programs. I think it's, uh, I could be wrong, but maybe it's Victory Outreach, or maybe it's a different program. But there is a, I believe, an independent fundamental Baptist uh, minister who started a recovery program. And I think it's called Victory Outreach. I could be wrong. But I notice a lot of uh, IFB churches and even Bible-believing churches have that. And you got to understand this, you need, you got to realize this, the world sometimes is up ahead where Christians fail to see it. But God already told you a long time ago, best way to recovery is through fellow brethren. The Bible says that the book of James, confess your faults one to another. What did the book of Galatians say? Bury one another's burdens. You need fellow brethren to support you. Now, of course, you got to use your head. Paul said there are some sins that are even shameful to speak about in the church. You don't want to say it to the brethren and then some little kids hear about it or newcomers hear about it. Yeah. You don't want to do it that way. You also don't, uh, we, the Bible also says that there are sins that have to be kicked out of the church. Yeah. So I'm sorry if you're, uh, so we had it sometimes where there are, uh, we've had people who are some, sort of addicts, and I'm not going to mention the specific sins or the individuals, but I know some people who had that, they can't come back to church anymore because of that. Why? Because there are sins that cannot be condoned in the church, otherwise people will keep seeing that. And then somebody else is going to get influenced by that. And it ruins the testimony of our church. We cannot have that. However, the thing is, is that that does not mean that you're going to be all alone out there for crying out loud. Do you know, I don't know if you knew this, but AA program, I don't know if he was or not, but when I read his life story, uh, he was a saved Christian, it really looked like. Now, I know Big Chuck believed the guy was a saved Christian. Me, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt he is. If he's not, hey, I'm open to that too. But the point is this. The point is, is that, look, when I went to a lot of recovery programs, there's always a Christian somewhere, some say brother or sister somewhere in there. Of course, you're going to get some uh, different religion people, some atheists, and they're not doctrinally sound as we are. But the Bible didn't say you need doctrinally sound brethren to help you. You needed what? Say brethren. That's what you need. You need say brethren. And in recovery programs, 
They said it doesn't matter which higher power it is. So look, while some atheists may be looking at a shoelace for his higher power, you can just focus on Jesus Christ. I kid you not, there are some people who actually said that. I had some Bible-believing brethren who went through recovery programs. They told me they heard people saying that, like a shoelace or something like that, or a doorknob. It was ridiculous. But they got a free, they got supported. You know why? Because they replaced it with Christian principle. Yeah. If there is no Christian church out there, which I highly doubt, uh, there's got, there, there is, okay? Government even sometimes support these groups too because they don't want a bunch of addicts running around. Yeah. So the thing is this, is that if there is no Christian church out there that has a recovery program where you can go to, there is a secular recovery program out there, and there will be a Christian somewhere. And wouldn't it be great that you have a, say, brother or sister in Christ over there, and maybe you can convert them to become a Bible believer maybe one day? That will be a good thing. So the thing is this, you need, say, brethren to support. So if you cannot do it in a specific church because the church does not have a program or something that can help you out, and they'll unfortunately have to distance themselves from you, the thing is this, is that there are so many out there still nevertheless, and you can get helped. You can get helped right there. It is important that you need, say, brethren around you to support you. You need, say, brethren around you to support you. Otherwise, you're not going to get victory. If you say, oh, no, no one's going to help me out there. I'm by myself. Ah, here you are again. You need to realize if I don't have a person beside me, that I'm accountable to, that can watch, get my back and watch me, I'm going to mess up and I'm going to fall. If you don't think like that, if you're not humble enough to think like that, you're going to mess up in addiction again. I hope that this teaching has helped you. Especially, I mean, we're not talking about, uh, obviously, like uh, heavy addictions here. We're talking about even any kind of so-called minor sin that becomes an addiction to you. This is a good thing for every Christian out there. And if you know how you get victory, I'll tell you how you get victory. It's through humility. God resisteth the proud. Remember that. If you refuse to go by God's ways, he's not going to help you. I tried everything, preacher. I tried. No, you did not. No, you did not. When we get to some specifics right here, and then I ask you, what, did you try this? Did you contact this person? Did you, when's the last time you read your Bible and prayed? And did you try fasting? This and this and this. Did you get outside of the house? How often are you alone? See, loneliness, I'm going to add this one. This is, go, goes along with number three. Do not be alone. Do not be alone, period. Okay, period. This is the word. Bob Jones Sr. once said, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. You know what the Bible said about Sodom and Gomorrah? How did they become so wicked in their perversion of homosexuality? The Bible says abundance of idleness. It gives your mind a lot of, it gives a lot of things in your mind where you want to imagine. And then that imagination runs wild and then you do more things. That'll preach.